Yeah, thanks for the invitation. And so I'll be talking about um, my joint work with Schmidt and, and, and Dougal Davis. Um, so many years ago, uh, Wilfred and I gave up some conjectures uh, about how to use mixed Hodge modules in the representation theory of real groups. And some of these conjectures were sort of written down and maybe some of them were not. And so I will partly discuss those conjectures. Um, the second thing is that uh, we had this kind of, this very nice uh, seminar during lockdown uh, about basic notions in representation theory. And so it kind of got us to think about various things. Uh, many of us were sort of newcomers to these things. And then that led to Duga and I sort of thinking a little further and sort of we made some progress uh, related to this, these conjectures. And, and so I will also be speaking about that. Okay, so let me sort of frame this thing in a particular way. So um, let me just start a little bit, the small thing about representation theory of real groups. So I start with some complex reductive algebraic group and it's real form. So real forms, so my, when there's no sub, subscript, it's gonna be a complex object. And when there's an R as a subscript, it will be a real object. And there's a very, very simple question you can ask, namely, what are all the irreducible unitary representations of this real group? So it's a very simple question, which has turned out to be rather hard to answer. And so I guess one problem here is that it's kind of missing a good conceptual network. Um, so there was an old idea, for example, saying that uh, you should just sort of quantize symplectic manifolds with GR action, and this is how you get all of them. So of course, it's a very beautiful idea, but I think that idea alone doesn't really sort of give you anything or nobody has been able to make any use of that, that precise idea um, to, to kind of find the new unitary, represent, the, the unitary representations that, that we don't yet know. Okay, so the first thing is to note that I'm, I probably, it would be better to consider these questions in the context of harmonic analysis. So there will be a dual group around, um, but I will not do that, do that today. So I will just be talking about uh, the real group and sort of trying to find it and this unitary representation and sort of try to figure out what we know about this question. Okay, so let me sort of start from the, almost from the beginning. So, so the first uh, real, so, the, the, so the, the absolutely remarkable thing was done by Harish Chandra so he solved this question uh, for the representations which appear in L2 of GR. And so those are the tempered representations. So at the same time, he completely understood how the L2 of GR decomposes into its irreducible constituent. So that was the, that was the, that was a, that's a sort of remarkable achievement. And he also turned this question into a purely algebraic problem. And so what he does, he considers a wider class of representations, which he call admissible. So the admissible basically means, so let me, sorry, let me not jump. So, so if I, uh, for that, let's choose a maximal compact subgroup. Let's call, call it KR and let's denote K by K its compactification. So now the admissible basically means that if I, if I decompose the representation under the action of KR, then each irreducible representation of KR appears with finite multiplicity. So, so that's the finiteness condition we, we impose on these representations. Okay, and so, so I write uh, frac G for the Lie algebra of G. My frac Gs are probably not very good for the Münster audience. They'll probably complain about my font. And so now, so let's write UG for the universal enveloping algebra and, and ZG for its center. And then of course, by the Harichandra isomorphism, I can think of this Z of G as, as H mod W, where H is the universal Cartan. Okay, so, so the, now Harichandra considers GK modules. So these are modules which have an action of the Lie algebra G and this group K. And as so I say, the K acts algebraically with the finite multiplicities. Um, and these G and K actions are compatible. So these are the, the basic objects and, and, and uh, such objects can be completed to actual representations of GR 
So for example, all these unitary representations we are looking for uh, come, can, can come from this kind of algebraic setup. So one way to think about these GK modules is they're somehow going to be algebraic vectors inside of your, your representation, which usually let's say takes case on a, on a place on a Hilbert space. So because I'm only interested in uh, irreducible representations, so irreducible unitary representations, let's only consider modules such that the center acts by scalars and so on. And, and, and so let me denote the, 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 the uh, element in H star, which gives rise to, the, to this element in the center by, by lambda, to, 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 to this character on the center by lambda. No, so this is a mostly a representation theory audience. Oops, I lost myself, I lost something. It's like a mostly representation theory audience. All of this is pretty clear to people, I guess. So, so then the third thing that, that Harisanda said is that if I now have an irreducible GK module V, so that it can be completed the unitary representation of the real group if and only if it's isomorphic to its conjugate dual as a GK module. Uh, and of course, if the corresponding pairing from V tends to V bar to C is well, positive definite, definite or negative definite. So this unitarity can be just checked purely algebraic. So that's the, that's the result of Harris Chandra. Okay. So now, so if, if, if V is isomorphic to V bar star, I will call the uh, representation Hermitian. Okay, and so let me somehow quickly sort of just remind you of what the Bailingson and Bernstein said. So, so I write script B for the flag manifold G mod B. And, um, and again, so I choose this, this lambda in H star, which gives me the infinitesimal character. So of course, if G is semi-simple, by the way, so you can think of this H star as H, H2 of this um, flag manifold. And so we assume this is regular dominant. And then what Bailinson and Bernstein told us a long time ago is that if I'll consider K equivalent D lambda modules on the flag manifold and take the global sections, uh, I get all these GK modules where the center acts via this uh, element lambda. Okay, so, so this gives us a very, very simple picture, uh, at least if you're geometrically minded for what the reducible representations are. So let us write Q for a K orbit on B and gamma uh, for a K equivariant lambda twisted irreducible local system. And so those are all gonna be necessarily of rank one so on Q. So, so the notation, uh, I guess Dougal chose this. So this is the notation that uh, Vogan uses. So we, we use exactly his notation. Um, Okay, and so now if I write J for the inclusion of Q to B, and then of course I get the standard picture in representation theory. So I get this the lower shriek extension, the lower star extension, and then this intermediate extension. And they fit together in this triangle and this J lower shriek and J lower star. So these are our standard representations and this J lower shriek star gamma is the reducible representation. And so this gives us all the reducible representations of the irreducible Irish Chandra modules for the uh, for the for the, the GK pair, if I take global sections. So now, so, so one thing maybe that you've never thought of thought about this too much. And now, uh, so there is this. So you can you can imagine in this whole story that I have this orbit and I have my k, and then of course I have this lambda. But sometimes I'm going to move the lambda around. And so when I move the lambda around, uh, this, uh, this, the, 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 the k structure of the representation doesn't change at all. Just the action of d lambda changes. And so, so that, that gives me somehow nice families of, 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 um, of these. This, this gives me a nice way of putting together the irreducible representations of the standard representations of the, of the group. OK. So let's let's then come to what uh, Lucy and Vogan uh, teach us. So this is of course following Kashi and Lucy. So uh, I'll be somehow um, um, I will talk about Lucy Vogan polynomials and Lucy Vogan story. Um, uh, although it is goes the same way as the Kashi and Lucy story, I mean they are enough twists I think to warrant uh, to 
give Vaughan credit for what he did um, for this version. So, so what do they, what did they do? So, so you look at the structure. I have this flag manifold. I have a K, and I have my lambda. And now I take it, let's say, to be rational. Um, so now this structure is defined over Z, or at least maybe I have to sometimes invert something. I'm not sure, but anyway, we can pass to uh, to the case of finite fields, and now you can lift these um, uh, these local systems uniquely to to mixed sheets. And when you do this, um, you can now write, write G and Q, M for a, a mixed, for the change of basics matrix between this J lower shriek basis and this J lower shriek star basis uh, in the K group of mixed sheets. So that's the, that is the, um, and then, so the, the point is, that uh, this, this matrix is given by some cartesian lucid type algorithm. So there's some algorithm to, to determine the entries of the matrix. Um, I don't know how good you think this answer is for telling me what the multiplicities really are because the algorithm is kind of bottom up thing. So if I take two, two representations and I want to know how, you know, what the entry of the matrix is, I have to work, out very, work very hard. I can't just directly tell that. So I guess so one remark is that uh, if you look at the K group of uh, uh, B of Q by invariant functions on B, I don't know why there isn't any in there, uh, then you get the uh, Hecke algebra. Okay. Okay, so that's the, that's the basic structure. And so we have used something motivic, very, very little, just the mixed sheets. Um, I guess the other uh, small remark, uh, which I guess we observe working on this is that the, um, you can also think of the, I mean, in some sense, when you look at how the story is written, it's everybody always assumes from the outset that things are integral. Uh, however, it's crucial for us not to assume any integrality. So this Lambda is going to be just an arbitrary element in H star Q. So it doesn't need to be integral. And if it's that, you know, there's, there's a small piece of a story and uh, you know the polynomial you get will be slightly different um, because in the non-integral case you can also think think of it as the integral case of an endoscopic group, and then these polynomials will differ by powers of q. Fifteen Sorry, why, minutes. Why does the endoscopic group arise? Can you just explain how they arise? Uh, so you take the integral co-roots. There is no subgroup of G who's, who that somehow gives you this answer, but there is an endoscopic group which gives you the same matrix. Maybe like an example would be something like SL2 times SL2 inside SP4, no? That's a kind of thing that shows up or? I guess so. Um, like it's what people sometimes call pseudo levies, no? Is that? Yes, or maybe, maybe not even always. No, I don't. It, I, I think don't think it will be a subgroup always. Yeah, I, I think it's what you get if you take the dual of a pseudo levy. Yes. Yeah. So the yes. so the dual group sets us. You have a subgroup, but then when you dualize the root system, you lose that direct relationship between the groups. Yes. Exactly. Of course, we we we, we were confused about this point at some point. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, when you learn something new, it's always uh, confusing. So anyway, but so that's the thing. So now, so uh, now let me come to, so, so this is somehow an ancient, ancient story. I told you it all goes back to the early 1980s or before. Uh, but now I want to, 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 to discuss uh, the work of Adams, Van Leeuwen, Trappa, and Vogel. So that this work appeared in Asterisk 417 in 2020. So it's sort of a rather long 180 page Asterisk volume where they um, give an algorithm to determine the unitary dual. And, and so now using this algorithm has been implemented, it's in the Atlas software. So now if you give the parameter, if you give a group and the parameters for the representation, it will be able to tell you if your representation is unitary or not. Okay, so, 
So I guess the reason for 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 trying to somehow do this in the in the in the algorithmic way is because for after many many years of effort, nobody was able to to, to somehow give you somehow more conceptual answer that would tell you when the uh, when the representation is unitary. So okay, so there are a few things to say first and. Uh, these things are not, uh, of course, due to, 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 to those four. So the first one is that you can reduce to the case when this, when this parameter lambda is real. I mean, you can always somehow deform to imaginary directions. So that's, this won't stop anything. If you, have a, if you have one of these nice forms, you can just go to the imaginary direction and this form will, will uh, stay, uh, have, will, will have the same signature as it did to be, begin with. So if it was definite, it will be definite when you deform. So the, the only time when, when, when there are problems is when you, when you hit some hyperplanes in, the, uh, in this real span. Yes, in H, in this, in this, um, let me see, this is work, in here. So there'll be some, there'll be some collection of hyperplanes. And when you fit those hyperplanes, then the representation reduces and, and then something happens. So you might have some form, form before that, you hit some wall, and then on the other side, of the, 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 the signature might be different. It might not be unitary anymore. Okay. Yeah, so maybe I should maybe I should say something more something a little bit more precise at this point. So so the point is that uh, that we know what the tempered representations are. Those are unitary. And so so now the only problem is that you can start from a tempered representation, and then you it has a certain parameter value, and now you can if you can now you can start to move this parameter, and when you hit a wall, something happens. So you don't, so you, so, and then you go to the other side, the representation might no longer be unitary. And furthermore, on the wall, the representation reduces, there are many, many irreducible representations and you want to know which of those are unitary. Okay, so that's the sort of the general shape of the problem. Okay, so then the second uh, uh, thing to say is that the condition that V is isomorphic to V bar star, so that's, that is just a linear condition on lambda. Um, so that's easy to state. But the problem is, the, the whole problem I think that Vogan, I say Vogan encountered because I think most of his career he's tried to solve this problem. Um, the problem you encounter is that it's very hard to keep track of what happens to this volume when you deform this form and you deform the parameter. So, so you don't know what happens. So now there is some say something which I would uh, so I have put it in red. So this is a novel idea. Um, so the novel idea is that instead of looking at gr invariant pairings that I was looking for before, you are looking at ur invariant ones, and this ur invariant pairings and gr invariant pairings can be then related to each other. And so the, here the UR is a compact form of the group. And the, of course, it's shows, it chosen so that the compact form intersecting with GR is, is actually the maximal compact group I started with. OK, so this is, the, this is the really novel idea that they introduced. And this novel idea somehow allows them, allows them to answer this question. So these forms. These forms for this, these forms always exist for irreducible representations, and you can uniquely pin them down by uh, requiring the pairing to be positively definite on minimal k times. So, so there's some very, very small representations of k that appear in, 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 the, in the representation. And so you can pin those to be, let's say, positive on, on those. So that's kind of the key to this thing that they can, they can somehow de determine. Uh, decide uh, a definite signature, definite signature, a definite sign for this uh, for this form. Then, uh, what is the idea of of Janssen? So the idea of Janssen is that is that if I somehow think in terms of this uh, these representations, 
uh, then and and I I try to deform now again I, I am at some lambda and try to deform the parameter. Uh, I can now look at some some um, some formal disk. I can look at this I can look at this pairing now in the in the family. And so, so when I look at this family, uh, of course, this this pairing because it's not necessarily these 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 two groups are not necessarily isomorphic. So this pairing, of course, will have zeros. And so now I can filter by by uh, order of zeros and poles, and I get what I call Janssen filtrations. And so this allowed the um, allows the um, this ALTV team to. Uh, to to ah sorry so so you if you use the result of Bayesian and Bernstein that this also graded of this filtration is semi simple um, you can then equip those with Hermitian forms and this way you get an sort of an an, an upgraded change of basis matrix what's I call QC um, so it keeps keeps somehow track of the signature in addition to keeping track of the um, the weight. So now there's an extra, extra variable S that keeps track of that. Is there something in the chat? Ah, okay. Okay, so now I was going to make some comment. Maybe I, maybe I skipped this comment about Bayes and Bernstein. So anyway, so, um, so Bayes and Bernstein basically uh, a long time ago, they proved what I guess one can call the Janssen conjectures. So they basically explained how the um, this Janssen this Janssen filtration really amounts to the weight filtration on this J lower shriek and J lower star. Okay. So they they you know they say nothing about the C form or anything. This is a purely algebraic result, and that's what they what they prove. Okay. So now, so here is the 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 main theorem of the of this. Uh, this ALTV team. So this is the theorem 20.6. And the statement of the theorem the following, that to each gamma, you can associate an orientation number. So again, I box this orientation number because I mean that some combinatorial invariant introduced by Vogan. Um, it's called it L0 gamma. And now the, 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 the result is that this, this polynomial that keeps track of the signature can be extremely easily obtained from the um, from this Lucy Vogan polynomial, namely by the, the by the formula I have written down. So the these so the the so somehow the this this these these orientation numbers those are defined directly in terms of roots. So those are easy to define in some sense directly. So they are not coming any kind of uh, uh, inductive invariance. So this, 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 this term here, uh, you can thus depends on, there's something that's just dust on gamma and gamma prime. So in some sense, I call it an easy term. So you take this easy term and then you multiply this complicated term that carries this Lucci Vogan data. And then you get a complete control of the signature. And so this, this theorem really is the key input to their algorithm. Um, and uh, so the, 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 the slightly strange part is that uh, this proof is only sketched <laughs> in, the, uh, in the actual paper. Um, and I guess at least I didn't, didn't understand the proof, understand the sketch. So, okay, so, so now, so what I'm going to do Sorry, next. can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, in the right-hand side in the theorem, this Q gamma prime gamma, what is the S? Like, what do, I thought that I thought that that change of basis matrix wasn't keeping track of a signature. No, I just put it in there. Oh, I see. Before it didn't, it wasn't there earlier. It was, it was just a Q, but I put SQ in there. I see, okay. Yes, so, so it's almost just like putting only SQ. <laughs> So it's is it roughly saying that the orientation number only depends on the kind of degree of the of the Q in the KLV polynomial? Uh, probably not. No, I think the orientation number. I don't think that's correct. 
I think maybe the right thing to say is, so once you fixed gamma prime and gamma, the signature only depends on the degree in the Dilistic Vogan polynomial, but then you have to normalize how it depends on the degree and degree, and that is given by that normalization is given by the orientation number. Yeah, that that does answer my question then. Yes, 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 yes. I misunderstood. Sorry, 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 sorry. Very good, very good, very good. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. No, so so it, it is of course completely. So you'll see when we come to the Hodge thing, it's some, something that you wouldn't, uh, that I wouldn't have expected had I, had, had we not known this result of, of, uh, of this term 20.6, we would have never sort of proved our theorem, but the thing that Dougal and I proved. So, because it's, uh, we would have never guessed that it's this simple, that's, that's the point. So, okay, so now, so, um, so mixed hash model. So I, I'll, I will now be working with the complex mixed touch modules. So this theory is due to Saito. So, so on smooth algebraic varieties, we have a category of this, this category and it has a six functor formalism. So it works just as you somehow would expect such a thing should work. Uh, and so roughly speaking, an element in this, in, this, in this category is a regular holonomic D module, so with some of the weight filtration and then some filtration, uh, DX filtration F. F dot M, which is the Hodge filtration. So, so it's good to keep in mind somehow that this, in the six functor formalism, when you sort of set it up, you know, so, so, you, so what, how does it work in this case? So there's somehow only one uh, functor uh, which needs to be fixed, where you have to say what happens. And uh, this is the, what happens to filtration, this F filtration under the open embeddings. And, um, so for the open fit open embeddings, things work exactly the way you expect. Namely, the the uh, the filtration is given by the order of Paul. So this is sort of the old uh, idea of Griffiths. I guess going back to some sense to Poincaré. Um, and so you only need to know what the order of uh, Paul means. And for you, you for this you need the device of uh, uh, of uh, uh, this, you need there's a V filtration, and for this, the, you need the existence of B functions. So B functions again is one of these notions that's kind of in the whole theory. They, there's a lot of formality, but uh, somehow the B function is kind of the <laughs> kind of the the sort of really the interesting part in the theory of D modules. Um, so I mean by DX filtration, I mean that this, uh, that, uh, this is a filtration by OX submodules, but uh, D moves the, you know, order N operators move the filtration up by N. So that's what I mean by DX filtration. So now, so the only thing where we uh, differ from, we deviate from Saito, uh, uh, so we follow the idea, we use an idea of Saba. Um, and for polarizing Hodge modules. And so this is uh, explained in this mixed Hodge modules project of Saba and Schnell, which is about available on the web. And so a polarization and irreducible Hodge module is a pairing from M tensor M bar to distributions on X. And so, so this, this input, this somehow this, this input, so the story somehow something is completely algebraic but we, we, we have we insert this polarization, uh, polarization, which is somehow not an algebraic thing. So it's somehow really an analytic thing. And so the idea for this, this comes to Kashivara. Um, and uh, and, and so, so, so the polarization is such a pairing where, where, you, where you sort of get an isomorphism when you, uh, of, this, of, this, of these two things. So this idea uh, comes from Kashivara from a, in a different context, but the, the other thing to keep in mind if, so this gives you some kind of Hermitian dual. Um, if you try to, if you ask the question, what is the duality of uh, GK modules in terms of the Spadins and Bernstein language, then again, you, you come to the same problem. There doesn't seem to be an algebraic description that you, you again use a similar description, similar, uh, idea that you need to go to analytic D modules to, to do this. Okay. So that's the that's the form in which we use the thing. 
And okay, so this is this is uh, nothing. So for uh, it's just a sort of a comment that uh, that they they sort of fix the sign of what these polarizations in such a way that they what they call the Deming's convention, and that turns out that convention turns out to be exactly the thing we also need. Uh, I have no explanation for why that is the case. Okay, so the Hodge modular point is just some great vector space, and and of course I put my indices down, although I will not be explaining things so much. So maybe that's it's not sort of not so relevant to this. Okay, so yes, yes, I get very good comments in the in the, in the chat from Professor Williamson. Yes, this is a complex version of the theory, so the vector space has no real underlying real structure. So the thing that, that Ulfra and I thought about a long time ago um, is, you know, so what should uh, what should this theory of mixed Hodge modules say about the um, Harris Chandra modules? So so now I take this twist, so it's still the real, and I, now I choose it to be dominant. And so then again, this gamma, these 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 uh, rank one local systems, they they lift uniquely to uh, mixed Hodge modules on the orbit, and so then I can extend them to. Uh, mixed Hodge modules on the whole thing. And, but so the crucial thing really, uh, I would say, uh, is, this, is this very, very simple observation that if I have, let's, say, let's have it not to be reducible polarized Hodge modules, then this, this pairing, so now I, I, have this, I have this polarization and now I can, I can simply integrate it against the Haar measure. And if you do this, you obviously can get something which is UR invariant. So whenever you are in the in, in the context of uh, representation theory in, in you know in these Harris Chandra mod modules, this is the Vaughan form. So th this is somehow maybe the, the, the key point is that this 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 that that one should have could have guessed the Vaughan that, that one should use the Vaughan form way before Vaughan did it, despite thinking in terms of these these Hodge objects. Um, so then there's a claim that our C form is normalized correctly, i.e. it's positive definite on minimal K types. Uh, this at the moment does not have a, um, a, uh, a complete proof, but I'm sort of confident that it soon will. Uh, and, uh, and I don't think there's any question about, about this being correct. I mean, so, so it's the same, it's sort of the same thing of a saying that the minimal K types have to lie in the smallest hard speeds. Um, and the smallest Hodge piece have this positivity condition just because, um, because of the way that the whole situation of poles is set up. So if the pole is of order uh, better than minus one, and then you are an L2 local, and then, then, then you have functions and, and, and you're positive definite. So that's sort of roughly the, the, the idea. So anyway, so the, the conjecture when we have is that this, uh, Functor is filtered exact, and um, and this means that the representations themselves, all these standard representation degradation sort of representations, carry sort of some mixed hot structures, infinite dimensional ones. But uh, and and of course the um, uh, the, uh, the 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 ones that are really hot structures, these irreducible uh, guys, uh, then of course also carry a, this fixed polarization. Okay, so that's the that's the conjecture that should be true. Now, so let me then finish by explaining what, um, what is it that Dugan and I do. So, so I would say that, so I, I am sort of old enough to say that, that, maybe a, that this probably goes quite far in actually proving this, this thing. And so let me just try to explain that. So, okay, so. So, so now this is the this is the thing with uh, Dugo. So, so now, so what's the what's the goal is to make progress towards this conjecture and at the time, same time give a natural proof of this main theorem of this this ALTV. So, so first let's observe that if you look at mixed Hodge modules on a point, and then the K group of the mixed Hodge modules on a point, it has kind of two variables T one and T two. And of course, the T1 and T2 are chosen so that you know the, the hot structure minus one zero minus one zero is, is T1 and zero minus one is T2. So and so now you can just do the same thing. You can just you can just consider the sorry, you can just consider the change of basis matrix between the irreducibles and these standards, and we call it Q Hodge. 
And then the theorem uh, is very, very simple one, uh, namely that you have exactly the same, same result, namely that this, this Hodge polynomial, even if you take, care, take into account the Hodge structure, is just given by some numbers, uh, which, we call the, which we call these Hodge lengths. Um, and otherwise you just again use the same uh, lucy Pokan polynomial. And this, and this again, sort of up to some powers of Q, uh, this LHQ really is just the orientation number. I mean, that's where it comes from. Um, and, uh, and let me again emphasize that at least I wouldn't have, wouldn't have occurred to me to even try to prove such a theorem without the, the theorem of ALTV. Okay, so, but so now, um, now uh, but now what happens is that if you simply now plug in t1 is s times q to the half and t2 equals q to the half to this theorem, you, you immediately get to this ALTV theorem 20.6. So, so this somehow is a much more natural way of, of somehow proving the theorem. Uh, we somehow prove a, prove a Z graded version of the theorem. And in some sense, sort of granting the Hodge machine is much, much easier. Uh, I mean, the proof comes completely naturally. Uh, there is no, uh, I mean, you just basically, uh, you just basically uh, do the same thing as, as always. I mean, when you set up this, uh, this kind of question, Lucy, how Lucy Vogan, Vogan thing, you, you, you look at somehow simple reflections and see what happens. And then, you know, once you know what happens for all simple reflections, you sort of look what you got, and then you put it in this machine and, and, and you, you get this result. Okay, so now uh, that's all I have written and I have three minutes left. Uh, I guess the, the, I should say something about this corollary. Uh, I mean, this corollary is not, so I mean, maybe I should just say is that it is not, I mean, the corollary is not. Because it's not straightforward. Straightforward. I mean, we have to, you have to, oh, my handwriting is terrible. Um, so the corollary, it's not straightforward. I mean, the, the, the reason is that the, the, the polarization, station, remember, it goes to M tensor, M bar to distributions on the flag manifold. So, so of course, so, so, so given that we have, we have such a thing, you, 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 have, you have to work with this kind of analytic object. And so of course that is slightly more complicated than, than uh, what uh, Adams, Van Leeuwen, Trappa and Vogan have to do in, in, their, in working with the signatures of their forms. But, but, but nevertheless, um, uh, the, the the theorem does follow completely from this from this uh, from this motivic uh, motivic formalism of uh, mixed uh, Hodge modules. And I'm one minute early, so thank you very much for your attention.